Welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast with your host, award-winning author, Paul C. Thornton, a weekly conversation with the amazing cruisers featured in the Joy of Cruising trilogy, comprised of the Joy of Cruising, Cruising Interrupted, and new release, The Joy of Cruising Again. Each book is a compilation of features about cruisers and cruise and travel personalities from around the world. It's the next best thing to cruising, hearing about cruising from the unique and diverse perspectives of Paul's amazing guests. Hello, passionate cruisers. This is Paul. And this week on the Joy of Cruising podcast, it is my pleasure to welcome a special guest, Chef Rudy Soderman, Princess Cruise's first head of culinary arts, along with his role as Master Chef for Holland America Live. How? If you've cruised on How, Princess Cruises, or on Carnival Cruise Line's Excel class ships, you may have been fortunate to have experienced Chef Rudy's specialty restaurant. On How, Chef Rudy led the highly successful launch of Rudy's Cell de Mer restaurant on board Cunnings Dam, New Staten Dam, Rotterdam, which I look forward to try as I have Rotterdam booked. Furthermore, Cell de Mer is run as a pop-up one night per cruise in the Pinnacle Grill on most of the remaining house ships. Rudy's Cell de Mer is an intimate brasserie featuring classic French dishes reimagined with a contemporary flair. A signature dish is whole Dover sole manure with shaved pink Himalayan sea salt. Carnival Cruise Corporation was so impressed by Chef Rudy's concept that they commissioned him to create Rudy's Sea Grill for its new XL class, Mardi Gras, Celebration, and Jubilee. In 2023, Chef Rudy partnered with Princess Cruises to create The Catch by Rudy on Enchanted Princess, Majestic Princess, Sky Princess, Discovery Princess, and the just released Sun Princess, which I am particularly excited about because I am booked on her also. There is so much more I can say about Chef Rudy, but that would take away from the time we can spend with them. So I will save the rest for our discussion. Welcome, Chef Rudy, to the Joy of Cruising podcast. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, especially uh, that I get to uh, sit down with you. It's great to meet you virtually. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. And I do hope you are doing great too, Paul. Yep, yep. You know, I'm very, very busy. Well, that's a good thing to do. Yeah, I know you're very busy. So uh, we're going we're gonna to get right into it. Before we talk about your cruise ship career, tell us about your background, where you're from, your, your academic and professional background before entering the cruise industry. Where do you live now? Anything that you would like to share? Oh, that's good. You know, all my life has been a fairy tale in which hard work led to triumph of adversity. You know, my name is Rudy Solomon, but everyone calls me Chef Rudy. I was born in Austria in a small town and I have 11 brothers and sisters. Wow. And I am one of tri identical triplets. Now I figure out who I am. <laughs> <laughs> my father passed away when I was only eight years old. And after that me and my triple brothers, Peter and Paul, worked to help uh, to support our family by delivering newspapers at five o'clock in the morning every day, helping my mother, who was a professional cook, in the kitchen at night. You know, Paul, these early experiences of hard work and responsibility shaped my character. My mother was my first cooking teacher. Mm -hmm and encouraged me to pursue a culinary career. You know, and, and then I was only 14 years old, as I say, I began a four-year culinary apprenticeship in Austria, in a small town called Bad Mitterndorf. Mm -hmm. You know, in, 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 in this stage of age, we, we didn't have the internet. It is included a, a 12 hours, 14 hour working days, starting in classrooms, kitchen and dining rooms. Mm -hmm. And after four years, at age 18, I came to the United States to work as a star in the, Intercon in, in, in the Intercontinental Hotel at Olympic in Seattle. Okay. You know, you know, like Chef Mouvon, 
Then I moved east and worked as a comic chef at the World of Astoria in New York, in New York City, and also in the Plaza Hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, after that, <laughs> I returned back to Europe to work in luxury restaurants in Paris and uh, followed by my employment in luxury hotels in Switzerland, Germany, and Italy. And later on, I also worked in Japan for six months. Wow. You know, Paul, it was also a different time. I was very young. I was just hardly 19, 20 years, 21. I was always driven and I had a sole ambition at that time to become a great chef, a good chef. I graduated from the Culinary Art Institute in Amuri, in Austria, mm-hmm. and also completed the hospitality management at Cornell University over the summer program. Oh, yeah, Cornell, so, that, that's... that's uh probably the top yeah. hospitality program in the country. Yeah, I was very well because I only cook great luncheon. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, I was ahead of my time. In my life as a chef, you know, that's also very important for, for our listeners. I always have been exposed to new recipes, different cultures, and chefs and co-workers from a variation of backgrounds with a broad and diverse background, I would say, I call it a spice rack of experiences. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I went, I found the kitchen shared a common set of principles. Strict discipline, coupled with friendship and commentary, fun and a healthy respect of each individual skills and contributions. You know? Now, sir. That, I have to say also, you know, go ahead, Paul. Now, I was going to say, Chef Rudy, you, you worked at all of these... Uh... Uh, luxury hotels, major hotels, what drew you to the sea? How did you get into the cruise industry? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> you know, you know, how do you get in the cruise industry? I believe it was a calling. <laughs> it was a calling. You know, I, I, actually it was from 18 years to 20 years, 22 years. I have seen a lot in the world. I worked around in, in, in four years in a condensed environment in, in the United States, in France, in Germany, in Switzerland. And mm-hmm. I wanted to see the world, to learn more cultures. And it was the mystic about being on a ship. You know, the mystic, you know, you think, wow, what can I do? I was not rich. I was not poor. But we didn't, you know, in this time, if you look back many years ago, we were just kids learning a profession. So it was the mystic to work on board ship. Because so it, it sounds it sounds like it was kind of a challenge. Yeah, especially since I was coming from the mountains of the Austrian Alps, since I had already worked in the United States, in Germany, in France, in Switzerland. And I met some chefs who have worked on board ship. So they told me stories. But then I always said, I felt like it was something that I put on my to-do list. You know, so one evening I applied to several cruise companies. And then 30 years ago, there was not many cruise companies around. In fact, in fact, there was only a few, you know. We had no internet. So I wrote, the applic- I wrote an application letter by hand. I got addresses from the hospitality sections in newspapers. I haven't heard anything for six months. Suddenly I received a letter, I said, bingo, I received a letter of acceptance. So I signed. Which cruise line was that? That was the Norwegian American line. So I signed in as a chef de partie. And that's already was a, a, a quite a high level, as I already had a substantial experience in my young age. At Norwegian, on board Vista Fjord, on Norwegian American cruise. Mm-hmm. It was one of the world's highest rated cruise ships in the industry and the rest is history you know so so talk about chef rudy those first few uh weeks and months on the ocean first of all let me ask you had you had you been on a cruise before no 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 so when i joined when i i, I it was the first time i worked on board ship of the chef the body we worked Long hours, and I never forget when I left home. I took a 15 hour train ride to Port de Vista Fjord to Hamburg. 
and, and and I was a little bit not shocked. I was, you know, I was it was it was a challenge for me as always seeing as a young boy it was totally different. I was a very young, I was 22 years old. Mm-hmm. And I I I was greeted by the chef with a totally different environment. Uh, the kitchen was fantastic. But uh, here it comes, Paul, it comes something out, out which I never really thought would happen. After the first six months working on board ship, I was promoted within six months from chef de party to first cook, from first cook to sous chef. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just promoted to executive chef at the young age of 23 years old. And, and, and As you can this... imagine, I was... I made a very, in, within 12 months, I made a huge step from a chef de party to sous chef and then to executive chef on board. Now, Mr. Let's, go, let's go back, Chef Rudy. When you first got on the ship, were you, uh, and you, you say you hadn't cruised before, were you anxious about being on the, the water? Were you worried about being seasick? Yeah, I was seasick a little bit on the beginning. You know, I had land feet and everything was new for me, as you can imagine. You work in the kitchen below decks and we had only 700 guests at that time. Mm-hmm. It was a luxury vessels. And I was a young boy. And, uh, but I loved what I did so much. So as I always say, when I worked in these kitchens in my young age, as a sous chef, the right hand of the executive chef, who had to leave appropriately, he had to leave uh, because he, he couldn't, he, was, he left the, the company. So I took over the helm at a young age of 23 years old. Wow. So there were, we were 60 chefs. Everybody was older than I am. Sure, it was a huge challenge for me as I was always seen as a young boy. And I felt that I had to show that I could do it. You know, and I always felt that I was always proving myself. But as I said before, I loved what I did, Paul. Mm-hmm. In a way, I was ahead of my time because I had already four years before great hotel experience, culinary sure. experience. So and at this time, I just was writing a cookbook. You know, I was ahead of time. So I had a strong culinary vision. I loved the work I did on the cooks who worked with me. I could convince who respected me at that time and supported me. I knew also at that time I could not do it on my own. Right. So I grew a great team together. You know, I always say, and when you grow a great team, especially at this time of my age, when I just published the beautiful cookbooks, so I, I want those people towards to me. And quite honestly, this team never let me down. So, so no? you you won them over, even though most of them were older than you. Exactly. You know, I was mm-hmm. just when it, I, I knew even though if I, I was thinking yesterday, I read your your questions here, and I say, my, my God, how did I do it? Mm-hmm. You know, we also eventually gotten a lot of attention from the global press because what I did at that time was unprecedented and also unheard of that time. Uh, when I wrote, published my first cookbook, age of 23 years old, again, it was unheard for someone so young writing a cookbook about cruising, about a kitchen, a luxury kitchen on board a cruise liner. Oh, so, huh? so, the, so the cookbook was, was specific to cruising? Yeah, it was the cruise ship cookbook, called it, oh, you know? Is and that- is that still in print? Is that available? Yeah, you can find it when you Google me. The cruise ship cookbook, you can find it. It was uh, done 20 years ago, <laughs> quite a long time ago. Have, and, you, have, uh, you, have you written any more cookbooks? Yeah, I have written 15 cookbooks, matter of fact. Wow. You know? Yeah. And then eventually, this is, I wrote 15 cookbooks. Uh, the cruise lunch, uh, the cruise ship cookbook was, was the the first cookbook of a cruise line specific to food. And, you know, it was at this point was also working towards me because a lot of great chefs wanted to work with me and for me. Eventually, from there on, 
in my young age, I went to work with QNET, who took over, uh, who actually purchased Norwegian Cruise Line. And I was immediately promoted to corporate executive chef for the entire QNET fleet of H26, overseeing the QE2 in 13 vessels was a challenge. Thinking back, as I said before, I often say, I do not know how how I did it. <laughs> so when you, when, when you took that position at Cunard at 26, how much time did you spend on the ocean? Were you you were corporate uh, uh, executive uh, chef. chef? Were you mainly in in the main office, or were you actually no. out on on the water? At this time, I was more out on the water. I have to okay. say this very engaged because you know i'm easy to work but before i have a bad executive chef i step into it and do my work myself mm -hmm. until it's there and needs to be so i took over the executive chef position on the qv2 immediately because phasing out the entire brigade at that time and bringing new people in the kitchen was not easy but you know paul in each chapter of my life I have been always been the youngest chef, no doubt about. It also was called sort of a culinary wunderkind in the European press, you know. So, then as they go ahead. Cunard is kind of, uh, and I'm I'm kind of guessing because I haven't really been on I haven't been on Cunard, but I sense Cunard is kind of a formal. How how receptive were your uh, teammates? <laughs> to a 20, 26 year old coming in and, and taking over as ex, as a executive chef. Yeah, that would be a great Netflix movie, I tell you. When I when I joined QNAT and the president of QNAT sent me out, uh, I have to say this very, very confidential as a guest on board ship to do an evaluation about their cuisine on board ship. And again, there's a lot to talk about when I was on a board ship for 10 days, just nobody knew me. Well, people knew me, obviously, already there. But anyway, uh, it's history. Mine was, was very, was fascinating. I transformed the QB2 kitchens, replacing, I would say, a diet English continental menu mm -hmm. with a fresh, vibrant global cuisine. At that time, I traveled the world as a culinary Cunard's culinary ambassador. When I could for royalties, head of state on board Cunard chips. You know, I have to say this also, thanks to at this point my vision, my creativity, and innovation effort in the 1990s. The food served at the historic Cunard Light at this time, this is still British ownership, was then I'm absolutely widely acclaimed as the best in the world. I received the Cunard was a mm -hmm. Interesting story because don't forget when I started as a 26 year old chef, I was the only there was only one Austrian in there, and I was the only Austrian, two non British chefs out of 160 mm -hmm. kitchen brigade. Wow, so so you were not just young, but you were to the rest of the chefs a foreigner. Yeah, I man, it was it was a totally different story. But you can imagine, Paul, if you picture this through, there comes a young guy, you know what helped me. My personality, my down to earth personality, also my empathy, and the cookbooks did help me because the chefs on board, who was far over 50s, 60s, even John mm -hmm. Benbridge was a huge, heavy chef. And he said, mm -hmm. What the heck are you doing on board our ship? You know, even now, wow. when he was scared the shit out of me. <laughs> when he was a huge guy. And he was giving me a hard time. And then he was smiling or giving me a big hug. I says, Rudy, you know, we're all wondering what is young, what do you want to do here? But I said, I, I don't want to change much, but I have the my ambition to make this ship, the culinary beautiful. He said, I'm retiring in six months. I said, well, I want to change two thirds of the kitchen. For European, I want, to have, I want to have Italian chefs. I want to have Swedish chefs. I want to have woman chefs. I want to have German chefs, American chefs, kosher kitchen Jewish chefs. And he was looking at me and says, he was laughing. Ha, ha, ha. Are you dreaming, my friend? 
I did it. I pulled it off. When we went to dry dock for six months, I changed the entire kitchen brigade. I kept only 10 shirts. Wow. So how long did you uh, stay at Kunak? 11 years. And also took on the responsibility as vice president of food and beverage on top on my role. And I was running 13 ships, and uh, which was the saga for at least a fjord. The sea goddess at that time, Queen the Princess, Queen the Countess, and so forth. Man, we did an incredible job, you know, no doubt about it. And I was very proud that we were, under my leadership, we were widely acclaimed as the best in the world at that time, no doubt about it, you know. Man, in 1998, mm -hmm. the sea goddess under my leadership became the first ship to be awarded 17, 20 points after the Grumillon, which actually is two star. Uh, Michelin, if you think about it, it has been, never been repeated until today. What uh, motivated you to move from Cunard? What was next? It's, it was interesting, you know, Cunard was purchased by Carnival Cruise Line at that time. And I was in New York and I also opened a restaurant there on the side. It was another great story. So, you know, it's like a football player. You get offers all the time. If you're good, people approach you, headhunters. Mm -hmm. Uh, approaching you, but I'm a loyal guy. I, I get offers all the time at that time. I was like a, a hot pie out there. I know people every month the phone was ringing or people was knocking on the door and give you offers. A hot, a hot property. I was a hot property. Yeah, I was at this time a little bit uh, uh, iconic because I have written several books already. I was really pushing the envelope and promoting cruise cuisine, which still today I'm still mm -hmm. working the same metaphor to show the people what we do out there. From where my, my, my mm -hmm. I would say my career ambitions continued after CUNET. You know, when the Royal Caribbean knocked on my door and asked me if I would like to launch nine ships in seven years, and you have carte blanche to create the largest fleet at that time with a Voyager class ship, I found it very intriguing. I was not sure, but I said, you know what, why not? So from there, I moved to Royal Caribbean as the head of culinary. Probably it was the most fastest year in my life. Seven years go very fast when you manage nine cruise ships, launching nine cruise ships, uh, the Voyager class ships. But also it was satisfying for myself because I could build kitchens. I could create restaurant concepts, which never done before. I opened, the con uh, I opened 26 restaurant concepts on a Voyager class ship at that time. When you were at Royal Caribbean, again, you, you spent most of your time on the water, correct? No, I had an office over there. Then I, you know, when you launch these large ships, you have to understand, Paul, at CUNAT, I had about 2,000 chefs working with me globally. Mm -hmm. At Royal, the numbers <laughs> are just multiplied. I know for 2,800 chefs, I ended up with 3,000 uh, 600 chefs for the, for the whole, for the, for the whole Royal Caribbean fleet and building new ships, which was the first time for me, because under QNOT, under the Richard American line, I never built a ship or I was involved in a new build. Mm -hmm. This was one of the job which really challenged my creativity to took on Royal Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And the seven years went very, very fast. But I was very proud when I have a shift there. It was so hard that I worked, even slept in the office. So yes, I had an office. I had a, I had a great staff. Uh, I had a secretary. I had four corporate chefs in the office. I had a senior chef working for me. I had a cost financial advisor. So I was working very intelligently that we make launching nine ships in seven years. So it says everything. Did you miss doing you know, what was mainly administrative leadership work, did you miss being in the kitchen? I still work in the kitchen. Every meal which went out there, I built our own desk kitchen at headquarters at that time. Oh, okay. It was the, fir okay. it was the first desk kitchen ever built at that time. Uh, to make sure whatever I put out there on the menu, it's done and approved by me. I do photograph, still today, every dish okay. okay i have so a you... lot i have a, i have a, a, a six eight nine corporate chefs who work with me very closely and i go out on the ship i call them new workshops 
so much mm -hmm. I can. I work with the chefs for new menu planning, scheduling, and I do photograph each dish. Okay. If I okay. don't approve it or just sneak it in behind me, so it doesn't work. I want to see if the dish is working because I'm a presentation freak. Make sure the mm -hmm. food tastes to be right. Uh, I'm very strict here on a procedure I have implemented many, many years ago. And by the fact, it's followed today. So from Royal Caribbean, you found yourself back to, uh, by, by this time, Carnival now owns uh, Cunard, right? And and and, uh, and Holland America yourself, Line, yeah. You, you, and, and, and Holland America Line. Uh, and so you find yourself going, but you hadn't worked with Holland yet, right? No, after Cunard, actually, made in fact, after Royal Caribbean, and the Johan Grudesen contacted me in Miami and asked me if I want to join Holland America Line. And mm -hmm. at that time, I said, well, after seven years, eight years, or seven years with, with Royal Caribbean, they made me a sweet offer so I could manage my own company. And I worked with there as the master chef and building up a culinary infrastructure for Holland America Line. Because obviously the people in the industry were talking what I did with Royal Caribbean at that time, where I left a huge footprint in the infrastructure of Royal Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So sure, again, here at this time, we had already found people called and said, Rudy, are you interested in joining Holland America Line? I said, well, not really, but they gave me a great, great uh, offer and said, Okay, and that was very straightforward. Afterwards, I joined Holland America Line. What year was that, Rudy? 2004, where I joined Holland America Line. We were far ahead with Royal Caribbean compared to Holland America Line to change Holland America Line, old tradition of Dutch cuisine. And mm -hmm. each executive chef out there <laughs> was writing down menus. There was no picture taking. There was no uh, system. There was no strategy. There was no... You know, it worked. I took over Holland and Merkel and as the master chefs. I mm -hmm. had great, I had a great run with Holland and Merkel line and also opened my first restaurant on board Holland and Merkel line. The Rudy's Cell de Mer, which actually was an iconic restaurant, if you think about it. It was the first mm -hmm. seafood restaurant on the oceans and it was a French bistro. And still today got really high marks and they got great reviews. And it was sort of a baby I, I, I did here. In the, in the same time, I built four ships or five ships with Holland America Line. And I was very proud because my learning curve out of Royal Caribbean benefited Holland America Line tremendously because I could build satellite cages in terms of buffet islands, which you see on Holland America Line, which fascinating today. You know, mm -hmm. I had a strong vision, put Holland America Line on the global, get them known for food. Again, I had a strong following there. I hired only the best people who really understood my vision, who could execute my vision. And I wrote, wrote, I wrote also four beautiful cookbooks for them, you know. So Holland America Line was very, very great for the last 18 years. Until I was asked by Carnival Executive to take on the challenge to build the culinary infrastructure and revamp the culinary offering as the food had been neglected for many years at Princess Cruise Line. Mm -hmm. So how can I run two companies at the same time with competing each other in one way or not competing because I have a different view? Recipe is a recipe. Knowledge should be shared. Procedures should be shared. But I made a decision last month, I will focus next year only on Princess Cruise Line, which is three times larger than, or two times larger than Holland and Berger Line. Now, Rudy, Chef Rudy, let me point out uh, to the listeners, uh, I'm sure most know this, but perhaps all don't. So both Holland America and Princess Cruise Lines are, you know, they're family members. They they are they fall under the global 
Carnival Cruise Corporation. That's correct. Carnival is a, is, is, is probably the, it's a, it's a, it's a great company. Uh, I, I, I worked for Carnival the last years and whole, Carnival is, Holden Merkel is owned by Carnival Corporation, a public traded company. Right. Princess Cruise Line is, belongs to Carnival Corporation. So a Seaborn, because I also managed Seaborn for four years in between. So, uh, and also I have a restaurant. And Seaborn, Seaborn is also part of the family. That's correct. We are family. We are an amazing powerhouse of family of cruise line of nine brands. And I worked for Holland and Merkel line. And what I reached with Holland and Merkel line, I can say they have the best food out there today. They have an amazing product. I'm very proud when I have a shift there of hard work and sweat. But when I was asked a carnival executive under the whole of the Line group by then to join Princess Cruise Line, I was very, very happy because I always liked Princess Cruise Line and I always felt they could do better. So that was history now. So I, now I'm working for one and a half years for Princess Cruise Line as the head of culinary. I spent as much time as I can on board ship. And, and- and then you you opened your your second restaurant, right? That's you opened uh, what's it the the catch the catch yeah catch me if you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have a <laughs> we have a great president John Barchett, who is very very creative and a beautiful person in people management. Uh, I met many many executive. He 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 questioned me immediately, Rudy. You have a restaurant on Carnival, Rudy Seagrill. You have a restaurant on Holland and Merkline. Who is uh, sell the mayor? Why we don't have a restaurant here at Princess Cruises? So, well, give me an idea. And he said, What about the catch by Rudy? So, well, it's a good catch. Let's do it. <laughs> so, 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 Rudy Seagrill actually on Carnival on the uh, the Excel class actually came before that's correct. The Princess, uh, the catch by uh, Rudy. That's correct, yeah. When I never forget that Mickey Aries on board Holland and Burger Line, and we opened the restaurant in New Statendam, I think, yeah, we did, I think, think so. The Rudy's sell the mayor, and he was so impressed what I did there. And I think Christian Duffy was there also, and uh, Mickey was there on some executive. They were blown away because I also create, I'm an artist, I also create food faces on blades, and the food I on, on and, and, and have you ever dined at Rudy's uh, seldom, uh, seldom Mayor? I have a, a table sending of food paintings, which is I do on blades. And they are, this has been never ever done before. I also wrote a book about it. So he was so impressed that he asked me, would you mind, can we can have a restaurant board carnival Excel gas with your name? You know, I said, okay, what do I have to do? You know. And that's not easy for a chef in my mm-hmm. caliber because I'm a perfectionist. I want to control what goes out. Yeah, there. you don't. You don't want to spread yourself too thin. Yeah, but you know, I know that they always if don't spread myself too thin. But you know, I'm. I have a system for that. I said, well, you know, how do you, how you, how does your chef feel if a chef from from Holland and Berkeley comes to Carnival? Sure, <laughs> it was not easy. I have to say this here, but I convinced them with my food I was planning over there. And I did not make the mistake putting a Celta Mayor at Carnival. You know, most chefs in the caliber of uh, any famous chef out there, whatever you call it, they have the same restaurant concept in different hotels around the globe. No, no, I said, I do not want to do this. The plate has to be different. The food has to be different. The service has to be different still good, but it has to be my 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 soul in there, you know, my artistically presented food and taste and so forth. And I pulled it off. Of the three restaurants, uh uh Sel de Mer on Holland America and uh Rudy Seagrill on on Carnival and then the catch on Princess. I know that you said you don't want them to 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 be the same. How how would you is there an easy way that you can differentiate the three for us? Yeah, when Rudy Ru, Ru Seldemir is a French brasserie. Okay. We typically French brasserie food. 
on a great present presentation Mali, which I'm known for. Mm -hmm. If you see in my food phases, uh, it's very unique. I also have a dessert that with a food phase. And on Carnival, I also feature the food phases because it's iconic to my artistic view, my artistic presentation, and also as an artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have it more American seafood restaurant. Uh, I don't have it French. I have it more Americanized. Mm -hmm. Which I'm saying is here, you still get the fresh oysters, but the presentation is different. Mm -hmm. The salad presentation, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a freak of presentation. The catch is again different because I focus really on the seafood bar and also on a, again, a different presentation. So I can say I have a seafood concept with three pres different presentations and elements on all the ships, which is unique. And not, not many chefs can do that. So, so no. speaking of the catch, uh, Chef Rudy, uh, I, I participate in a uh, group on Facebook uh, called Princess Cruises uh, Dining, Food, and Drinks. And so I said to the group, I said, hey, uh, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Chef Rudy. What would, you like to, what would you like me to ask him? And... and uh, one question, one question <laughs> I like, it said, uh, ask Chef Rudy, if he were going to eat at the catch, what would he order? Ah, fresh oysters. Fresh oysters. <laughs> I, I love fresh oysters. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm oyster. I like also seafood. I would have a nice seafood. But what about a dish? What about yeah. a, 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 a dish that you desire? A cooked dish? Fre oysters is too easy. <laughs> One of your creations. You know, you know my, my, there's a lot of creations out there. I mean, you, know, you know, if you say, what would I eat in a, in a restaurant? I mean, if I go back, you know, I would say, hey, it depends what situation. In my restaurant, would you definitely eat a, a fresh mm -hmm. fish, uh, a fresh Dover sole? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A Dover sole, I would definitely. It depends also on my mood, you know, on the location. And if I would visit you, I would say, would you like to eat with friends or would you celebrate? I mean, for me, it's important. I'm a simple guy. I would definitely eat, eat my steak with fresh shrimps mm -hmm. on top, mm -hmm. you know, or a, a lobster. I mean, I'm very simple. But trust me, all what I do in these restaurants, the ep the epic indeed. So, yeah, oysters, I would say, and I is uh, my homemade mashed potatoes I would eat in my kitchen with a lots of cream and nutmeg, you know, but that, yeah, I would have very simple, what I would say, I would say a seafood platter, or if you eat with you, I would definitely have the, the Rudy's uh, sell the mayor or the, the catch, I would in all restaurants, the, the, the fresh seafood, uh, you have oysters, you have shrimps, you have lobster, you have mussels, mm -hmm. you have all these beautiful items piled on a crashed ice, which is beautiful itself. Well, I'm going to try each one of them. Uh, I'm booked on uh, the Rotterdam to uh, Panama Canal, so I'm going to try uh, Sel de Mer. Beautiful. And uh, I'm I'm booked on the Sun. Fortunately, that's not until 2025, but I'll I'll try to catch. And uh, well, I've already I've, I've, I'm not booked on on Carnival. I've been on Mardi Gras and I couldn't get a reservation into uh, Rudy Seagrill. So sometime I'm going to have to get around to to, to try. Yeah, that. yeah. I got a call, I got so, a Rudy, call last week where a guest connected me with LinkedIn and said, Chef, I cannot get into a restaurant. I booked the ship. <laughs> I booked the ship, the schools, only to get into your restaurant. I said, Holy Maloney. When I get these messages all the time on LinkedIn. And I know I cannot follow up every day. So he was really upset. I have not replied. So he, he, he reached me out, but he reached me and I got him into it. He said, it's the best experience he ever had. I said, thanks God it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you may get a call from me if I can't. Absolutely. Get in. <laughs> Listen here. Absolutely. We do that. So when you're not uh, uh, cooking, or overseeing culinary at the various cruise lines. Do you have any time for leisure travel? Yeah, I mean, I like, I'm, well, I, I, I do not really particularly go on my 
vacation on a cruise, but yes, I do go on a cruise. I, for example, I booked a, uh, over New Year to go on a ship with friends and family uh, for 10 days. But the only problem is sometimes uh, I cannot really relax. But that's the only problem I have. Because going on vacation while work is not always the smartest idea. <laughs> as, he, as I just said, I can't relax. Because if I see something is not right, I have to fix it. Hello. You know, however, I took a cruise to the Antarctica two years ago, which was amazing. What, what line? That was Seaborne, you know, it was a small ship. And that probably was an amazing experience. You know, I did a transatlantic crossing at the Queen Mary, which was also one of my highlights. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people ask me, what's your favorite ship? Uh, I would say I don't have one. Actually, I, all my last, every ship that opened in the past was my favorite ship. Each ship, each ship I would say, has its own beauty. What about uh, uh, land trips? You do uh, land travel? <laughs> I wish I would have time. You know, when mm -hmm. I'm on board ship or I go on board ship, I also travel with some corporate chefs on the challenge them from 6.30 in the morning and my meeting 7 o'clock in the morning and we have to get my agenda is very, very tight. When I go on a ship, it's precise mm -hmm. work and it's very difficult to get me on land trips. You know, as I said, my trips are, on board are very short and very productive. I go on a ship and leave the ship within five to seven days. When you are on a ship that is a non-Holland uh, America or, or Princess uh, ship, do you find yourself, uh, what's the right word, being judgmental on the food that you're served? Or, I mean, are you able to, to eat it just as a as a... A passenger, or are you always on duty and checking it out and saying what you would do differently? There's a good question. There's a very good question because when we chefs, as I speak only for myself or for other chefs, when we go, when we, I, I like to go, I like to eat out because I want to see new restaurants, new food, but I never go out to criticize or comment on food. I would comment mm -hmm. if the service is very bad or the food is ill-prepared. You know, even then, I would say it's not worth to complain. I would not go back, period. So if I go on another cruise line, uh, it's very hard. It's very hard to compete with my food out there, I would say, what I do. So I'm very I'm critical, absolutely. But I can make a story out of it there. It is what it is. Move on. Okay, I can do better. Are you, you know? are you recognized? That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. When I go on a ship, I went on, on, on a German cruise liner, on a German ship. I did the, <laughs> I did the, uh, the, 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 what they call the, the, the uh, a river cruise down to, to the, to the uh, Amazon, which was an amazing cruise. I check in. Hey, <laughs> the captain, oh, are you Chef Rudy Solomon? I recognize you. Then the hotel manager came, mm -hmm. chef, I worked with you. Then everybody, well, that was in holy Maloney, you know? Yes, people recognize me. You know, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing, you know? Good. Let's get away from cruising uh, and let's talk specifically about food. Let's go way back. So, so when did you know, was it when you were assisting your mom that you, when did you know you wanted to be a chef? That's a that's a it's a good a good good question, you know. I was I would say I was six years. I have pictures today when I was dressed up as a cook at Carnival. And I have these pictures in my home kitchen. And how old with six years? How old were you? Six years. Wow. I was six six years at that time where I was dressed up in chef's clothes. You know, it's actually it's fascinating. And my sister gave me this picture. She found it in an album. And I said, wow. You know, wow. And quite honestly, I was 12 years old. And my mother said, you know, we were a large family. And we were by me no rich. We make mid end. And we worked. She, I was helping her in the kitchen. And she says, you know, we were triplets. And one in two years, we have to 
our school is finished, mm -hmm. what we do doing? We didn't have the money to start in colleges or in high school. We went to high school, but we didn't have the college for, for the academic grade there, the money. So I said, hey, she said, why don't you become a, get a chef? Well, I like it because I like to cook. So I knew by 12 years, mm -hmm. I know I've chosen as, to be a, as a chef or a cook. As a young young man, you what know, was the I was 12 first years, dish you know? that you were proud to serve others? Ha, huh. you know, when I was, I was very proud when I came home for Christmas in at our family table, it was a Christmas goose with all these trimmings. So I remember it very well because my mama didn't have to cook for all our kids and for family. So I, I did the cooking and I was very proud. I put this off. And also at that time, I still have to laugh. I was cooking a sucking pig. You know, when we I grew up in a farm sort of environment, I had a sucking pig, you know, you don't get it like this here. So I also have to slaughter the sucking pig and I never could do that. So it was all a learning experience. So it was uh, the Christmas goose, the, the roasted sucking pig, and with all this trimming, was how, I was very proud how old to do were that you? in a young age. And uh, I was about there, I would say 16, 17. When I came, I, I went in the apprenticeship, I was 15. Uh, 16 was my first Christmas at home. You know, we all had to work. You know, as a chef, always I say, we always work when people had a good time. All the, all, all the holidays, we have to work. But I was off for Christmas on my second year of my apprenticeship. And then I cooked this great Christmas dinner, which sticked along in my brother's and sister's uh, 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 reminiscence. They still talked about many years afterwards. Do you have favorites yeah. to prepare at home that you don't uh, prepare on the cruise ships? Yeah, there are so many. You know, as a professional chef, you know, as maybe each chef will tell you a story and also say, I do this, I do this. I, I, I like to prepare pastries, you know, mm -hmm. my souffles, my cakes, my cheesecakes, or even my great Sunday roast with root or vegetables or just pasta, you know. But since I have prepared so many dishes over the last four decades, and it's a good question, do I prepare anything which I don't prepare on the ship? The problem is I would say what I have not prepared on the ship, I could not do at home. <laughs> What's your, what's your, I know this is a, this is a tough question, probably like uh, asking a parent who's their favorite child. What's your single signature dish? You know, there's so many, it's, it's so many, the endless favorites, the signature dish, I would say, I would say a good Salzburg knuckle, a souffle of Salzburg is the signature dish of mine, which is available at okay. Saltenbeer and also at the catch by Rudy. People love it. And a single signature dish would be a nice pork belly stuffed or a veal belly stuffed with nice vegetables and a great mushroom ragu, I would mm -hmm. say. It's beautiful. Uh, it's a signature dish of mine. I can serve it anytime in my house. People would go away. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, hey, Chef Rudy, I had a, I had a cruise vlogger on the, the, the show uh, on a recent uh, podcast who is also a chef. And she actually uh, dislikes vegetables. And she talked about what it was like to, to go, you know, to culinary school, <laughs> but not like vegetables. Do you have any uh, any food that you dislike? Ha, huh, there's a good one. No, there are no foods I dislike. I will try well, that was, anything. That was, that was easy. Ball. I think it is strange for a chef to say, I don't like a certain food. You know, I like vegetables. I never heard this before. <laughs> we don't look at food in like or not like terms. Because when I work with chefs, if the chef tells me who I work with, he says, I, chef, I don't like this. I say, hey, listen, hey, who cares what you don't like? We're here to give the guests what they like. You know, mm -hmm. that's not an option. It's funny, actually. She said this. <laughs> well, she said she doesn't like to eat vegetables. <laughs> she can cook them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she, I see. she can cook them. She oh, just... I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, people have the preferences or not, why not? So you don't have uh -huh. a food you dislike. What's your favorite food to eat? Uh, I, 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 I like sweets. Or maybe I shouldn't say it loud. I like my coffee 
with a good reason brain muffin or a flesh uh, a nice fresh fluffy croissant at breakfast you know also i'm very very old-fashioned in many ways and also like the new stuff but i like my roast grilled chicken at dinner you know on a grill mm -hmm. on my home grill mamma mia then i love my homemade mashed potatoes as i said before with a lot of butter cream and nutmeg listen <laughs> You can't say no. Well, Chef Rudy, uh, I know you are very, very busy, so we're not going to hold you too long. But before we let you go, uh, we usually ask our guests some, some light or fun cruise questions. Uh, and senior executives like you like to have fun, too. So, so uh, sure. what's your favorite cruise drink? You, you mentioned coffee. You, you have any other favorite cruise drink? Ah, you know what? I'm a wine connoisseur. I like a great bottle of wine. You have anytime. you have any favorite that? And maybe yeah, I like the good wine. I also like my martini. I would say here, mm -hmm. why not? And uh, you know, I listen. I'm a chef who like great wines. My mm -hmm. great red wine, uh, mm -hmm. absolutely. And no, no, Paul, it's also interesting. A lot of people, somebody sent me yesterday uh, a newspaper clip I haven't seen for many, many years. And I got this yesterday in an envelope. And it says, this was from the Salzburger newspapers in, in Germany, in Austria. It was it's written in, in German, actually. I opened it yesterday when I came back from Europe, from Italy. It says, it was a beautiful story written about four years ago. And I got it yesterday. I guess send it to me. I never saw it actually. Who says there's no chef in the industry who has shaped the cruise industry more than Rudy Sodermin as chef? That was nice, a nice story to hear, you know. But you know, I also did mention not many chef people know that I owned two successful restaurants land in between. I worked with the cruise industry. One was Amadeus in Stanford, which was a Viennese a coffee house restaurant, which was very successful. And the other one called Atlantis in Greenwich, Connecticut, which is also to say shaped my understanding as a chef and helped me in the future of my career of a business acumen. Because whatever I did, based on the principles, whatever we do in the kitchen, you have to treat it as your own, as, as your own restaurant. And give the people, or when people come to me, give them something to, they do not have at home. That is always a success, I say. Otherwise, why they come to you? Okay, so you said, what's your favorite cruise drink? What's your what's your favorite cruise food other than your own? You know, you know, I hate cruise food. <laughs> I said the rest of food, cruise on so. Okay, what's your what? <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is here, you know. Um, you saying what my 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 my, my cruise food, my favorite cruise well, food? Well, let me put it this way: What's your favorite food on a cruise? My favorite, but not from one uh, of Chef Rudy's restaurants. I like I, I like a, a beautiful rack of lamb. Okay, I would go immediately for a nice beautiful rack of lamb, with nice uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would go definitely immediately if they have it on the menu. Absolutely, oh. it's a no-brainer for me. All right. Uh, Second question, Chef Rudy, what's your most wonderful or memorable or funniest or even most embarrassing cruise or port experience? You know, this is a good one. <laughs> it's a good one, actually, which was actually wonderful and memorable. Also funny. When I when I was a chef on the Queen Elizabeth II, on the QE2, mm -hmm. and when the Queen Elizabeth herself, the queen came on a ship and I met her. Wow. She thought I was British. This was funny because she is saying, are you not British? I said, hello, my dialect. <laughs> it was memorable and she was smiling and I said, she expected a, a British chef on board the most famous ocean line at that sure. time. Mm -hmm. I think it was funny and memorable. You know, no doubt about Do you know... Uh... Now, was this before she had uh, eaten, had a meal on QE2? 
Yeah, yeah, she was dying. I mean, I, I, I entertained a lot of state of royalty at that okay. time. You okay. know, there was also Nelson, Nelson Mandela was on a ship in an Africa cruise. When I met the Queen, I met Diane at this time. I was the chef at that time on Cunard Line, which I transformed to her. So that was funny, actually. I had to remember this, and I had a, a big smile there, you know, on my, as you can hear, I speak very good English, but I still have a dialect. Mm-hmm. Which never, I never wanted to lose anyway. Why should I? I'm, I'm, I'm international. So it was funny, you know. And she, she, she thought actually, you yeah. were British. Yeah. <laughs> even after, even. And then she found out, no, I am from Austria. Even after hearing your, she your, said, your accent. She, yeah, and I was very young. She expected an old British man sitting there <laughs> in the chair of the helm of Cunard Line at that time. Mm-hmm. And then I met the Queen Mother, and she was very sweet. And she questioned me how, how a guy like can do what, you know, was, I had some great memories mm-hmm. and memorable memories, there are plenty of it. You know, this was actually very, very funny. Mm-hmm. And also because she thought I was British. Mm-hmm. Well, I found this very funny. Well, here, here's a, here's a uh, tough one for you, Chef Rui. This is the last question. So, so you have a large following, of course. Uh, welcome to the many uh, Chef Rudy fans and friends listening. Uh, we hope your fans have enjoyed what they have heard at the Joy Cruising Podcast and will come back for future or, or past episodes. So, Chef Rudy, share yeah. one thing that my listeners and your fans don't know about Chef Rudy. Ha, ah, that's a, a very hard to talk about myself, Paul. Uh, I want to be remembered or known as the chef who has shaped the culinary landscape in the cruise industry as no other chef before. You know, I'm also known, more than known as an artist and photographer. And I'm very proud of my many cookbooks I have done and also my art book about food faces and headdresses. And I'm I would say also, I, I, I want to know, I was the first, the first in the cruise industry and in hospitality industry to bring women into the kitchen. I'm very, very proud about that here. And more and more, I think I'm very, very proud and should know that I mentored thousands of chefs all over the world the last four decades. And ha, that's a good one, actually. And I'm the only chef on the ocean who has worn red pants for over 30 years in the kitchen. Now, what's say, say that again? What's that mean? My red trousers. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, actually. You know, I, I, I'm the chef who wears a red trouser for 30 years. Okay, that, so and that's what you, became sort of a trade. That's what you're known for. Yeah. I, at first, I thought that was some kind of culinary award. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have plenty of culinary awards. Maybe I'm very blessed with this year. But I'm also known... I'm sort of a funny and I love what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, when I go on a ship and you would be with me, the crew would seek out to see me and take pictures to send home to their parents and to love them. This tells me also that I have done something right. Great. Very nice. Chef Rudy, it has been great talking to you. Continue best wishes in your career. And, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule to come on on the Gerald Cruising Podcast. Paul, I thank you for taking the time to be on your show. And I'm very excited for Princess Cruises as the head of culinary and watch us. We will do, we'll do a lot of great stuff the next years to come. Hey, before, before we let you go, tell our listeners how they can uh, follow you. Under Rudy Sodermin on Instagram, Sodermin Rudy on, link, on, on Instagram. And uh, hey. I'm out there, but I don't have much time. I, I do post frequently because I do it for the chefs who follow me out there. If I do not post for one week, I'm getting notes what's happening with you. Are you okay? <laughs> okay, Chef Rudy. As they say, we will see you on the ocean. I look forward to seeing the ocean. Why, you guys, you know what? The best you can do in, when you're at home, take a cruise. We do the cooking. We do the service. And trust me, it will be the best vacation you ever had. I agree. The Jorb Cruising and Cruising Interrupted, each $16.99 plus shipping and new release, the Jorb Cruising again for $18.99 can be ordered at the link on the JorbCruisingPodcast.com. 
For each of the three books, use the discount code Joy of Cruising Podcast and get $4 off. The Joy of Cruising books are also available at Amazon. Order the ebook at Amazon or your favorite online retailer. Stay in touch by joining the Joy of Cruising Podcast Facebook group or following the Joy of Cruising Podcast on Instagram. We're constantly adding new shows. Please leave a review and tell a friend about us. We hope you enjoyed this brief escape to the ocean. See you next week.